as you can see, we're in a new location. Um, I've been working on putting this together for a little while, but this is my this is my workshop, and we're down here because I want to work on a woodworking project. So this piece of wood is um, a piece that attaches to the bottom of the control panel, and this here is the strike plate for the latch. Um, so there's supposed to be a latch on both sides. Uh, there is a latch on both sides inside the cabinet, and then they're supposed to hook into two strike plates, one on either side. As you can see, this wood has just gotten chewed up and deteriorated over time, and so we only have one functional latch. This latch did not come with the machine, so thank, to, thank you to Mike's Arcade Shop, who sent me these uh, two latches. Um, they are ever so slightly different. Actually, I should stop calling them latches. The latch is the piece inside the arcade cabinet. I want to call this a strike plate. But as you can see, they are ever so slightly different. But I think that they're going to work. The problem is, obviously, I can't mount anything over here. So I've got this massive piece of particle board. Honestly, the only reason I have a piece so large is because um, <clears throat> this board, is, it's two feet by four feet, um, and it was nine bucks at Home Depot. Uh, it's a particle board, just like the original piece. And I started looking just because I was like, I really don't want to buy this huge piece, but I don't really have a choice. Um, all the other woods that would have fit for this control panel were more expensive than just buying this entire board. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is line up the old board with the new board. And then I'm just going to hold this in place kind of firmly. And then I want to take a pencil and just trace the outline of this original. Oh. So, just got to make sure this is flush all the way across. And the nice thing about the pencil is I don't have to do a ton. Uh, now, I'm also going to go into each screw hole. And hopefully, give myself a nice little centering dot so I can drill new holes. <coughs> okay, I need to remove this piece <coughs> so I can get those holes on. All right. Now, in order to make this easier for myself in the future, I'm going to take each of these holes and kind of draw an X with both lines going through the center hole. This is just going to make the screw holes easier to see, especially with this particle board. It has a lot of little speckles and things. So really just want to make sure that as we're working this wood, we have a good idea of where the screw holes need to go. This basement is the shadows. Oh, not super fun. It's back over here. I believe that's the spot. Yeah, that looks about right. 
Now, one problem we're going to have is where this strike plate is actually installed. Those holes are too thin and too deep to really get a pencil in. So I need to grab a tool. I'm going to grab my square just because like most squares, there's a ruler on the edge of it. And what I want to do is just measure how far these holes are from the side. So they're, let me see here. Yeah, they're just about, they're an inch and a half, inch and a half from the side. And the first one is two and a half from the bottom. Wait. Sorry. Two and a quarter from the bottom. And the second one is two and three quarters from the bottom. So inch and a half in. I'm just gonna come over here. Just gonna measure. And a half. And then I'm going to use my square to just kind of use my square to get a nice straight line. Uh, this can be a little tricky, but you want to take your time. Make sure you get it right. All right. So now I've got a line going this way. Then I'm going to go to it was two and a quarter inches, I believe, up from the bottom. So two and a quarter. And then I'm going to do a similar thing here. Just trace that two and a quarter line. Pretty much square across, and then I've got a two and three quarters line to do as well. there and we'll do it a third time and where all three of these lines meet are where I'm going to want to drill holes for the strike plate bolts on this side okay now we've got everything pretty well marked up I am going to try to do a rough cut. So I really just want to kind of cut somewhere around here, straight across the board, probably with my circular saw, and just kind of do a rip cut. And then after the rip cut, we can use some of the other saws down here to do more finely detailed work. Yeah, it should work. Just need to grab an extension cord. Give myself a little bit of room, not have to worry about snagging the cord on anything. Hmm. 
Okay. I think I forgot to hit the record button, but what you'll see is I did just a use the circular saw and just did a really rough cut. This is the lowest line on the board. This is where we cut, which is the purpose. So what I want to do is set up a different saw to really hone in on the exact distance we want to cut. So what I've got out now is my table saw. And what I'm going to do is take my board and go to point over here and where I've drawn this thing ending and I'm going to measure. So this is just one tick past five and a half. So on my table saw, I actually have measurements here. And I have this little thing that's hard to see. And I can slide this block up to five and a half. Five and a half, this would be five and five eighths, I believe. And then I lock this piece in position. So now the distance between this and the blade should be exactly five and five eighths. I just this uh, table saw is really old, <clears throat> so I've lost a number of pieces and moves and things. And so this little dial that raises the blade is supposed to have a handle here, and I just kind of crank. But ooh, that's been going for a while. Now I don't really want to bring this entire blade up. I just want it up enough that it is, yep, that is higher than the board. Okay. All right, this is going to get loud. Now, obviously, I'm not a professional word worker. However, this is my knock block. And before I start cutting, I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Imagine the blade is here running. I put this board on here, and I want the board to press against here. But I don't want my fingers anywhere near the blade. So I'm going to use this piece of wood to contact and just guide this through. And then when it gets to the end, I'm going to use it to push it the last inch. So my, my hands are never anywhere near the table saw blade. And that ensures that all my fingies stay in place. All right, let's get going. <laughs> See, we've got a pretty clean edge right along where we want it. Now, the tricky part is going to be this cut up to here. Um, I'm thinking that what I want to do is drill these holes last. And I, what I want to attempt to do with this cut is maybe use my chop saw. Um, 
and then get the corners with my jigsaw, or I might just use the jigsaw to kind of ride the pencil line. Um, so let me swap out, uh, let me swap out tools, and we'll come back and see what we do. So I have opted to try the jigsaw. This is my Ryobi battery-powered jig. It has served me well for a while. Blade should be pretty fresh, and I can just pop in a battery now. Before I start using this, um, the enemy of the jigsaw, so jigsaw goes up and down and up and down and up and down pretty fast, makes it a breeze to cut through wood. However, as I've learned doing plenty of woodworking projects, um, the main enemy of a jigsaw is wood that is not secured um, because obviously if it's going up and down and the wood is going up and down that's not getting the friction it needs to cut so what i'm doing right now are installing a couple of manual vices onto the board uh, just gotta get the angle on these right so that these can clamp the board to the table. Now this board really shouldn't move. So I should be able to come in with the jig, and just kind of ride this pencil line. Let me grab a flashlight to make sure I can see the pencil line as I'm working. And of course, gotta wipe these stupid things out. But always wear eye protection when you're working with wood. Oh, pieces of wood can go flying anywhere. You really don't want them in your eyes. straighter lines in my life but again this is just kind of sitting under the cabinet I'm not incredibly worried about it does not need to be perfect two pretty good lines going that way. You just need to adjust these clamps. So the, real, the only kind of problem with this piece is that the very top of it is like less than an inch wide. And so making sure you've got it clamped with room to cut. It is a little tricky. I think we're gonna have to ditch the clamp because the clamp is running into the edge of the jig. Just run one clamp on the other side, hand hold this, make sure this goes nowhere near my fingers. All right, there we go. Whew. Now we've got to turn the corner, Whew. which usually isn't the end of the world. It's a little tricky. I try to just angle it this way 
get a little nub in there and then just kind of pry out the little burr that I've created. And then what that's going to let me do, I'll be able to smooth that out with a jig or some sandpaper after. It's just going to give me access to kind of get this in here to run it straight across the top line. is I did forget that this board was wider than the piece that needs to go on the control panel. So if we take so there's one more line to cut. So as you can see pretty well lined up. Just need to trim this excess over here. And so huh, I think probably going to use the table saw. I whew, actually I might use my chop saw, but I'm probably not going to film it because this is going to be a quick cut. I finished up with the chop saw, and I think the results are pretty darn good. Pretty darn close to the original piece of wood. Now the next thing we need to do is start drilling these holes. And so I'm going to get the drill out, but the question becomes kind of, well, how do I go about making sure that I'm drilling the right sized hole? Um, I'm sure I could go around and measure the bolts and all this other stuff. But in this instance, I am recreating something that exists. And all I really want is for the holes on here to be in the same size and position as the holes on the old one. So for the four bolt holes that connect this to the control panel, that'll be really straightforward. And for the four bolt holes that attach the latches, it should be pretty straightforward. So let's start with the ones that connect it to the control panel. These are just straight up drilled holes. And my thought here is I can kind of eyeball it. Looks like it might be about 3 16 And then I'm just going to, oh yeah, 3 16 looks good. Let's see about the next size up. Just going through my bit set here, uh, 13 64 is the next size up. Does that fit or is that too big? Okay, that also fits. So I want to find the biggest one that fits through the hole and then just use that. The next one is 730 seconds. Does that fit through the hole? Okay, that does. All right. 1364 can go back. Hard time. I don't see 15, 60, this is 7.30 seconds, this is 15, 60 fourths. Okay, that's a very tight fit. Now the next one up from that would be quarter inch. I really don't think it's quarter inch. I don't have a quarter inch bit in this set. <coughs> As you'll see, half this bag is just bit sets because I lose them, I don't know where they are, but also like this one only goes up to a quarter. This one goes all the way up to half an inch. Right. So, so this is the quarter inch. I really think this is going to be too big. It can, so it can go, but it's getting stuck. I would think if it's getting stuck, 
This one goes in. It's pretty tight, but smooth. A quarter inch. I'm gonna leave that there. So let me let's drill these two bolt holes <clears throat> on this side at the what did I say it was? Uh, 1564. So let's drill them at the 1654s. And then I'll go up to the panel and just see if those bolts fit well in the hole. So I'm just going to get the 1564 bit into the drill. Make sure it's in there nice and tight so we don't get any slip. Sixty force holes look pretty good. Let me grab a bolt and we'll see. Okay, now one of the bolts from up there. Oh yeah, fits in there perfect. So definitely glad we didn't jump it up to a quarter inch. All right, should I put this in my pocket? I do not want to lose it. Okay. Give me a sec, we'll do the next one. countersink bits. So where in the heck did the old piece of a goo? Here it is. So these countersink bits are going to be, so if you can see here, right, on the strike plate, there's a wider hole up at the top and then a smaller hole where the bolt goes through or machine screw. And the reason for that is because this part it's going to be sitting right up against the metal. So if you have a screw head up there, it would bump into the metal. So you want to countersink it so that the screw head kind of sits down in there. It doesn't interfere with the metal. So I'm going to play the same game we played last time. Now I'm pretty sure these are going to be a lot smaller. And just kind of try to find the biggest bit that will fit through the hole. Oh, it might be my smallest one. Let's see. Oh, I think that's going to be too small, but I guess we will find out. So let's give this one a shot. And so as you can see with this countersink bit, it's got a normal drill bit, and then it's got this extra bit at the back 
And the whole purpose for that bit at the back is just to widen out the top of the hole to allow the screw to sit down longer. Wrong set. Now, really hoping my screwdriver plays nice. You'll notice my bits have these nice thick shafts. This countersink bit's got a dinky little shaft. So, you know, I'm no expert, but my understanding on these things is, is that the smaller the shaft is, the kind of less surface area there is for the drill to catch, and so you might get some slips. Actually, this one is so small, it's so the drill has these three little pieces that slipped in between two of them. So you gotta be really careful putting this thing in to make sure it's actually centered. Because if it's off center, I'd imagine you get really sort of nasty um, artifacts because then it's not centered on the spin of the drill. Okay. All right, that looks good. It's steamy down here. And be stupid. I should invest in better safety goggles. These ones are just steaming up the center. Let's go and loosen the clamp. Just slide this in a little further. Just a little bit over the table for support. Just because these holes are a lot closer and I don't want to accidentally poke a hole through the table. think that should be enough countersinking. Let me grab, and I've got all the hardware down here. I've got fresh bolts for the fresh hardware. So let me just grab one of the bolts and just make sure that Drop this through. Okay. So it's interesting. It goes through, it seems to go through part of the hole, not the entire hole. It's, just, it's a little tight fit, but honestly, it sits nice and flush under the countersink. I'm okay with it. It's not bad. These bits leave a bit to be desired. I just sat on the freaking drill. Please don't tell the Facebook safety police that I just sat on a goddamn drill. I am not a professional. <laughs> I've said it many times, and I'll say it again. But yes, I just sat on a live drill. Jesus. It's a little late here. All right. Now, this was tight. I just want to kind of knock it. I'm to use this. I'll just kind of gently... Just want to 
push it back out. Like I said, I'm okay with it being tight, but I don't really want to drill while there's a screw up there. All right. Set this up and we'll countersink the other spot. Oh. I can't see fish cable. Work up on this, see if that helps. All right, yeah, so this is just gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, but again, I think I've got enough there to countersink because these screws are not big. Um, so let's... So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna skip ahead in time because I'm about to do the exact same thing to this other side. And then we'll look at mounting the hardware. All right, now we've got our mirror images. And I have fresh bolts, fresh nuts, and fresh strike plates. So the one thing we wanted to make sure of is that this strike plate over here had a grounding wire that went from it to this bolt, which I think is attempting to ground the uh, the control panel. Make sure nothing ever shorts that. So I wanted to take that, reinstall that. But basically, all I'm going to do is pop my bolts through the holes. Maybe that hole. Interesting. So this hole might need to be widened. Let's take care of that. It's crazy small drill bit. Oh, so I did learn something about the drill bits. Um, the reason that it appeared to be slipping is that this piece here that does the uh, the countersinking has this little hex bolt in here um, to secure it onto the bit. And apparently, as it came from the factory, it, uh, just, they just shipped it unsecured. So it wasn't all the way on there. So I tightened it up a bit, and now it works much better. Okay. Uh, oh, this is the tricky part about these tiny little bolts. Where did it go? Luckily, I have more than I need as well. It's a lesson I learned a long time ago in woodworking. If you need four, buy the six pack. <laughs> and not hurt. to screw through. It's really weird. It's just this one hole. The hole right next to it, the bolt popped through just fine. It's okay because we really don't want these bolts going anywhere anyway, so a little bit of a tight fit is fine by me. 
Okay. So I've got those both through. And we're gonna grab our strike plate. And we're gonna grab a couple of the nuts. to like totally destroy this bag just because it's a 12 pack and I don't really want just loose tiny little nuts running around the workshop. All right. I'm just gonna hand tighten these for now. Probably come back off camera and tighten them with a, uh, with a wrench and a screwdriver for right now. I'm just going to hand tack these down. Both of these installed along with this little grounding wire that runs from here over to the bolt that connects to the control panel. I need to tighten these bolts up. I don't have that down here right now. And as you can see, the countersinking came out rather nicely. So now all that's left is to attach this to the control panel. So, uh, definitely forgot to hit record, but unexciting. Put the control panel back on the uh, machine, and uh, here's some footage of my son playing a bit of a Giga Wing on there. Uh, fits really well. Uh, one other oddity I discovered is that uh, one of the latches in the machine um, at some point had been instead of the being mounted with both screws through the factory holes uh, one of the screws was actually put they drove a new hole and it was on a really weird angle so it was extra tight um, I'm actually thinking that that pressure may have been what eventually caused the particle board to just kind of you know disintegrate and pull through um, I'm not 100 percent sure though because that probably would have pulled the whole thing, but either way, um, I reattached that, uh, mounted it into the proper holes. Now I've got nice pressure both sides of the control panel, and it's really not going anywhere. So, what did I learn? Um, I definitely learned that you could spend a lot of time doing something really just obscure. Uh, this is really not something I had planned on doing. It took a while. Um, getting it done right was nice. It pretty much looks uh, stock and works better. Um, but just not really where I expected to be spending my time when I dove into this project. Um, and the other thing is just that... Um, you know, an arcade cabinet is really different from, like, a console or a computer. There's so many different things. There's woodworking, there's electrical, there's electronics, um, and there's just a lot to dive into. Uh, so it's nice to be able to use some of my woodworking skills from around the house, um, but, yeah, there's just a lot going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do apologize that I was not reviewing the footage as I was shooting it, and obviously the autofocus was just going absolutely bananas the entire time. Um, chalk it up to my first time shooting in the workshop, um, and so I think, you know, in the workshop in the future we'll probably use a, a manual focus rather than the autofocus, but again, if you like the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.